Orc Log 224. The Ministry of Omniflex Resources pulled an old welding unit from long-term storage. Label says Sparks. No manual, of course. Just a precision aerospace frame, untouched for decades. They handed it to me for great integration. A mobile welder for deep tunnel maintenance. I told them it would need a nuclear lithium cell. And somehow, they approved it. Adapting old aerospace tech for Dominion standards isn't easy. But failure in the grid isn't an option. So wish me luck. Work Log 225 When I first joined the Ministry, I was stationed in the flood control sewers beneath Mio City 5. No daylight and no ventilation, just rusted valves and jammed intake fans. That's why I learned to work fast, or get drowned. Since then, I've rotated through half the Dominion. Fuel systems, cooling lines, even reactor stems in cities that no longer exist. Always fixing someone else's bad weld or last minute patch. Now, I'm Adaptive Grid Specialist Section 1216. That means I get placed where I'm most effective. And for once, that includes my well-being. The Dominion doesn't talk about technician happiness much, but they track it. They measure everything. So when Sparks landed on my bench, I thought it had to be in this file. This unit isn't built like the old trench crawlers. It's precision aerospace. The legs alone are reinforced with titanium with ceramic tension plates, quiet, flexible, made for factory floors, not tunnel grime. Still, the entire frame needs to be torn down like a vehicle rebuild. Every joint and every actuator. Disassemble, clean, recalibrate, reassemble. Nothing survives this long without picking up some drift. The legs are the least of it, but they matter. If they can't bear the weight under grid conditions, the whole project fails. So I've started slow, refitting the lower limbs, adding bracing, tuning the stance for uneven surfaces. The real difficulty's still ahead. But for now, this part's almost peaceful. A quiet start to a long assignment. Work log 228. It took an extra week to reassemble the legs. Those aerospace tolerances are no joke. Now I'm tackling the hand. Someone must have flagged my success rate and decided I was due for a challenge. But come on, five articulated fingers? That's excessive. Especially when every joint feels like a puzzle box. Compared to welding sewer mains, this is surgical. If I had to manufacture parts this precise from scratch, I wouldn't. I would turn to the Dominion's manufacturing partner, PCBWay. They handle everything from intricate 3D prints to precision machined housings and full PCB prototyping. When you need parts done fast and accurate, they're a solid partner to help bring your designs to life. Work Log 230. Progress on the arms is steady, but the tolerances are unforgiving. Rebuilding the elbows took two full attempts all while working on a makeshift bench held together with wall screws. Normally that's fine, but this assignment isn't normal. A man came through the maintenance tunnels today, a clean man, Dominion Seal, no name, no introduction. He looked over the sparks frame, then asked one thing, operational readiness timeline. I told him the truth, months, maybe longer with this setup. He gave a small nod and left. The next morning, I got a sealed requisition approval for an upgraded workstation. No request filed, no origin listed, just approved. Work Log 232. It's been two weeks since that strange receipt came through. No mysterious visits, no equipment. Maybe I misread it. Wouldn't be the first time I've been promised support and had to finish alone. This week, I've started integrating the welder directly into the right arm. No more dangling wires and just clean internal routing. I fed the primary leads through the welder housing, then made contact ads from 99.9% .9 copper. Testing the circuit showed that she was ready for work. It's a kind of quiet, precise job I never thought I'd enjoy. After all, I've spent decades in the tunnels. I used to hate delicate projects. 
but thinking about how useful sparks will be for the grid has been energizing. Work Log 237. Every bench I've ever had was a patchwork of junk with wobbly legs and an uneven top. But in order for sparks to become mobile, I needed a precision lithium housing for a nuclear cell. And my current station wasn't up to the task. Not even close. But then it showed up. A brand new workstation with some assembly required. The Dominion moves at its own pace, sure, but credit where it's due. They still follow through, even buried under protocol. What arrived was the FlexiSpot E2L, a motorized L-shaped workstation with full sit-to-stand height control and a solid steel frame. I mounted the return on the right side to match the layout of the room. The LED panels lets me save custom height presets, and the whole thing adjusts smoothly with just a tap. I accidentally discovered the anti-collision sensors were well calibrated when I tried lowering the station and it almost smashed the garbage bin but stopped itself just in time. That feature might be standard now, but in a machine shop, it's a simple safeguard that prevents real damage. It's more than I expected, more than I really need. I've never worked with tolerances like these in a workstation, and I don't expect that I'll need to again. Maybe someone's planning ahead for new guidelines, or a new operator. Either way, I'm grateful. It's not what I expected, but exactly what the job demanded. Work log 239. The torso's just about done. Most of it is the nuclear housing. Vented, shielded, and locked in tight. I used the flexi spot station to plate the copper cleanly across the cell contact points, then bolted the shoulders and pelvis directly into the housing. There's not much framework. There's really no room for it. Everything is welded tight right around the core. This unit vents heat like nothing I've ever seen. Between the side exchangers and intake grills, over a third of the outer chassis is dedicated to cooling. That's more than most mechs give their reactors. I reinforced the conduits with EMP shielding, just in case. For all the precision in this frame, it still has to take a beating underground. I'm routing the welder's main feed into the cell now. It seemed risky at first, but the readings are stable. Sometimes, I wonder what Sparks was meant for. You don't build something this clean just to fix tunnel junctions. The aerospace tag makes it obvious, but that field's been dead. The collective saw to that. Anti-air systems are so good now, we don't even bother with planes. And orbital travel? With the Van Allen belt supercharged, the stars might as well be a myth. No one teaches aerospace engineering anymore. We're lucky Aeromecha Industries is still around, and even they haven't delivered anything that flies in a while. It's like the sky was written out of our future. But Sparks remembers it. Every micron, every fitting, overbuilt for an environment that we'll never see again. Still, it's not wasted. The grid needs machines like this. Not just rugged, but graceful, adaptable. I'm mounting the last few heat exchangers and transmission relays now. The signal antenna is short range only, but it'll be enough to get commands into its core logic. For something designed to weld starships, it'll do fine fixing tunnel junctions. And honestly, I'm glad I can bring it back to life, no matter where it ends up working. Work log 242, finishing the head today. The sensors are ready. A logic core is still basic. No sentience per Dominion law. Anything smarter risks collective interference. They infect artificial intelligence like rot. Still, I wish it could think. But ignorance is bliss. If Sparks ever woke up, it'd be a threat to both sides. Work Log 244. I'm prepping parts now. Cleaning surfaces, masking edges, and readying everything for paint. It's quiet work, and a good time to think. I've been with the Ministry longer than most of my supervisors. Worked at every type of station. Grinding, cutting, machining, sewage pumps. Welding was the only one that ever felt like mine. Maybe I clung on to it for too long. 
But building Sparks has reminded me why I did. It's not just the torch. Everything built once had meaning, and it can again. Work Love 246 I always wondered how I'd know when I was finished. Turns out, it's when the machine you're building doesn't need your guidance anymore. Sparks hasn't just come back online, it's adapting. I gave it some basic motion controls, and now it's fetching wrenches before I even ask. Yesterday, I tossed it an empty can just for fun. Caught it midair without crushing the thing. That kind of precision's rare. What I wouldn't give to see what the rest of the aerospace field looked like in its glory days. Machines built to fly. Now, crawling through tunnels under the Omniplex. Still, I'm glad Sparks gets to live again. Doesn't think, doesn't speak, but somehow it gets it. It's doing great. All that's left is to finish up the decorum and run some field tests. Worklog 249. I can't get over it. No records. Really. Just the label sparks? It sat untouched for decades, sure, but how long has it truly been around? A hundred years? Two hundred. Surely not a thousand, not in this condition. When did we stop flying? When did the Collective make the skies unreachable? There must have been entire fleets like Sparks once. Before the war, certainly, but that was 2,000 years ago. Hard to imagine the kind of civilization that could afford to build something this precise just to shoot it into space. It's humbling. We still have pieces of that world. And I get to be a small part of it. Work lug 251. Final detailing today. Details, hazard markers, unit numbers, then some trials in the tunnels. I even applied the Dominion insignia. Sparks is official now. Another asset in the service of the Ministry of Ombiplex Resources. And speaking of the Dominion, I keep thinking back to the stranger, the one with the clean boots and that quiet authority. I haven't seen him since, but it's hard not to feel like his fingerprints are all over this project. That workstation? It's too refined for someone like me. Too quiet and too perfect. But for Sparks, it was exactly what was needed. No margin for error, no time for guesswork. The precision meant all of this was even possible. Maybe the stranger knew what this unit really was, and what it could become that it wasn't just salvage for the Reclamation District. A machine built for the stars, now destined to keep the grid alive beneath our feet. Maybe I was the only one who could bring it back. If that's true, then this wasn't just a work order. It was a test. And someone out there is still watching to see how it all turns out. Work Log 254 Got a notice from the Ministry this morning. Job complete. Sparks has been reassigned to Adaptive Grid Specialist, Section 1216. That's my section. My title. Took me a second to understand. Sparks isn't just the next tool. It's my replacement. And I'm proud of that. Over 30 weeks, I rebuilt the unit from the ground up. Gave it a welding arm, a portable nuclear power source, full autonomy from static ports, it's human size, tunnel ready, and precise. The workstation wasn't for me, it was for Sparks. They're not kicking me out, they're giving me the honor of retiring. And it turns out, I wasn't just fixing an old machine, I was preparing something to carry the torch. The work won't stop. But I finally can.
Thanks for supporting the Royal Archive. It means this story won't be forgotten, and that the work we do, even down here in the tunnels, still matters to someone.